Hey, my name is Sarah Corgan from Root School. I'm here to talk to you about dogbane, one of my favorite plant-based cellulose fiber materials that you can find in Vermont, Opossinum cannabinum. So what we have here is this really beautiful, tall auburn stalk. And in this stalk lays these bast fibers that lay between the inner woody herd and the outer waxy cuticle. So what we look for is its habitat along river sides moist fields, sometimes shaded roadsides, and we're looking for this really uh, unique auburn color. And oftentimes it grows in populations. It's not always easy to find individually, but you find them in group masses. And so as you keep your eye out for this, <clears throat> you can harvest the stalks when they've matured. And that means that the cellulose is fully developed and that you're gonna yield ideal fibers. So when we harvest it, we don't necessarily see the key identification features that we see in the summer. Entire leaves, opposite branching, beautiful corollas. Uh, but what we do see are the colors, the populations, and their seeds. And you can really see how they're a cousin to milkweed in so many ways. And that these will open up and have these hairy tufts that will allow it to, to disperse. Allow those seeds to fly off. So I want this auburn color. I can see here that there's this grayish stalk and that these are last year's stalks and no, no longer really ideal. Um, so if I want to harvest, I can use my knives, any sort of sharp edged tool. Sometimes you can pluck them, but sometimes you get more of the roots than you want. And now I have this stalk to work with. So there are many ways in which you can extract the fibers. Uh, and I find that people have their preferences. So what I tend to do is crack it from the base up and take this rounded stalk, breaking it flat. It's gonna often break into four pieces. And I just work my way up as far as I can up to the branches and I pause and I come back to the bottom and I use my fingernail just to open it up and I just slide my hand on up so I can expose this inner woody herd. And so at this point, I can start to remove that inner woody herd and I cast these aside. And I sort of seesaw them off of, my, off of the fibers themselves, working my way up. And slowly you'll see this ribbon start to form and I tend not to pull straight down because I lose a lot of fibers so it, it you know it's a little tricky at first maybe but not so much and this way you can really maintain the bulk of the cellulose and that's really what we're going for this is some of the strongest most durable of fibers and it's also really soft. So when it comes to bags or clothing, this is something that you'd really look for. So bass fibers are fibers that are defined by laying between these inner woody herds and this outer waxy cuticle. So other bass fibers would be stinging nettle, milkweed, flax, hemp, all really great fibers in their durability and strength. So once I get to the top, I'll kind of just peel it out. And then I'm left here with this ribbon. And I just give it some slight agitation as far as removing that outer waxy cuticle. I find that if these dry, that process moves a lot faster. And I also don't want to do it stock by stock. I want to really like harvest a bundle and then work from there. And that's really going to be more time efficient. But uh, as you can see, perhaps, you can see those really finer bundles of cellulose. Um, and so as we process them, we're going to get rid of this outer waxy cuticle because that's just going to add a lot of mass and no strength. And we're going to get to as fine of a fiber as we possibly can. And it's from here that we'll either twist it up by hand, we'll spin it up into whatever it is we're making. Bowstrings, bags, and I'll show you some of the things that I've been making. So I want to show you some of the things that you can make with dog bane. 
So we're moving here from these fibers and we're going to process them out a little bit. We're going to agitate them slightly to get that cuticle off. We're going to brush them, comb them, and refine them as much as we need, depending on what our final product is. So here I have what's referred to as the toe. It's a lot of the shorter fibers and a strap that's been woven out from there. And then <clears throat> dogbane is really, uh, really noted for its strength. And so you can make some really excellent rope project that's great to start, keep on going, put it down, pick it up, keep, keep making it longer and longer. So in brushing it out, I can have those shorter fibers, the toe, or I can also have what is the line. And these are the much longer fibers. And these have been brushed out so that they're a little bit more hair-like in so many ways, and it does make them easier to work, easier to spin if you so choose. And you can really just see how luxurious they are. And these could be even brushed out much finer than this as well. Um, but from here, I would spin it out. And what that's been allowed, has allowed me to do is make things like this bag, which is a labor of love. And we see some other fibers in here, some stinging nettle, some milkweed, um, primarily dogbane, and a two-ply twine construction. But it's really soft and really durable and nothing that I'll ever break. And so if I treat it well, it'll last lifetimes. So go out there and find some dog bane. Take a beautiful walk, look for this lovely color, long river sides. And if you want to learn how to twist up into some cordage, check us out on another video. My name's Sarah Corrigan from Root School. Bye.